Hello, this is Mr. Rudwick. I'm going to be illustrating the Java debugger using uh, a previous student's code for linked lists. Now, JGrasp is a flawed editor, I'm aware of that, but the one thing it does better than pretty much everything else is debugging, especially using data structures. So, um, the first thing you need to do when you want to run your debugger is you can add a breakpoint. Um, so I'm going to put one right here, right? And you can see this nice little gray strip here. That's where you put breakpoints in. Okay. So then you hit the bug here. So we can see on the left, here's all my variables. Now there is an argument because main method takes in string args, but there's actually not really anything in there. However, you can see now, oh, let me recompile this. So now we actually have all of our variables. You can see I said list node head equals new list node with a value of hello and a next of null, right? So you can see we have this little ticker over here. You can see all the variables that we have. Now the best thing about this is you can actually take this guy and drag it out. So we can see there is my um, object. And there's a couple of nice things over here. So if you want to move into a virtual desktop, if you want to make it always on top, right? So now when I'm actually playing around with my code, right, it's now always the top element, right? So you can see head equals new list node, foo comma head. So what that's going to do is that's going to add a new element in front of hello and then redirect head to be there. So if I step one time, you can see, wow, right? So there's foo, right? If I run it again, there's boo. In front, right? There's nonsense in front, right? And you can see this is a whole chain of doing new list nodes. So if I run this line, it's actually going to stick multiple list nodes in front, right? Boom, boom. Look at that. Um, other nice things that this that the JGrasp debugger, or maybe other ways that you can use it. So you can step into a method. So this guy right here will step into my print method, right? Which will print a square bracket down here. It's going to execute this while loop. So you'll note that there's actually two head arguments. So one is in my main method, I have this thing called head. And a second one is inside this print method. All right. So while head is not equal to null, we're going to print the current value of head. And then we're going to advance head. So when we step one time, you can see it's going to print head, right? It's going to advance head. And so now there's actually a second variable named head here, right? So the one that I'm actually looking at is the one in the main method, right? That's this guy. But this variable, this local variable head is now a separate thing, right? And I can actually take that and drag it out as well. So this is my local variable head up here, and this is my variable head that's a reference from my main method. All right, so if head is not equal to null, print out a comma, All right, while head, which is this one up here, while head is not equal to null, print out head.getValue, which will be science, All right, or this head here, All right, head equals head.getNext. So what's going to happen here is this guy is going to advance, and this thing is going to change as well. All right, so this top one just changed, All right? And again, same idea, right? Stick on a comma, right? So print out that, and so on and so on. Um, a couple other things to point out over here. Again, you can actually like open up this whole chain of linked of list nodes, right? So there's my value is coffee, my next is this list node, right? So its value is next, and so on and so on. Right? And then additionally, in this call stack up here, you can actually see all the methods that are calling itself. Right? So here's a different head, which is this is the local one in that method up there, right? And here's the inside of my print method, right? So we can actually see the different states of all this stuff. And this gives you a nice little overview of how does Java actually call different stuff, right? So our Java virtual machine basically creates this call stack, which will save the state of all the variables. And will basically add the method call on behind that, right? So. This, these different spots here are actually this locations of memory as to where that stuff is.
Cool. That's a nice little overview for the debugger. Uh, I would definitely recommend using it if you get stuck in your stuff, especially if you have logic errors. Um, it can be a bit of a bear debugging recursive code, but especially using data structures, it's excellent. Happy coding.